Hi, I'm LaShawn and welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here and you want to be inspired on a daily basis, then this is the perfect place for you. Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. Hello, hello. My name is LaShawn and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a very simple lifestyle vlog where I get here every morning and I try to uplift, encourage, and inspire as many people as I possibly can. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am the divorced mother of three adult children. I have two boys and a girl. I am a United States Navy veteran. I'm also a surgical tech. I am disabled and I work full time here now from my home. I am a hustler. That's right, I'm a hustler. I get up every day and I work. I do something for my YouTube channel every single day and I love what I do. I love to help people, uplift people, encourage people and talk about the love of the Lord. That's right. So this is my new intro. So here I am, <laughs> and if you like what you see, click like, share, comment, and come back here on a daily basis. So, here's today's video. Hello, hello, it's me, LaShawn, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here in Jacksonville, Florida, and it always is beautiful here. Rain, sleet, snow, hot, humid, it doesn't matter. It's always beautiful here in Florida. Okay, so welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a Q&A. I get lots and lots of questions. Sometimes I answer them, sometimes I don't. Some things I keep private. So if it's something that I hold dear to my heart that's private, I just won't even address the question. It's better than, you know, to doing the back and forth. So uh, I have picked out a certain amount of questions that I have written in front of me, and I'm going to focus on those. Now, if I was doing a live, i let you post a question. But then again, that takes in the people asking questions that are personal that I, do, I choose not to answer. So it's better if I just do a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, put them in the comment section, and I'll make a new video, and we'll do Q&A again. It's a get-to-know-me type of situation, and the best way to get to know me is to ask me questions, right? Okay, so the first one is, I'm going to use my marker so I won't duplicate. Why is it that you do not drive? Okay, I'm going to start from the beginning. I am diabetic. And my eyesight is not the best. And I learned that a couple years ago, I was not uh, seeing very well. But when you are diabetic, it's imperative that you take care of your eyes, that you get them checked annually. Because it, with just a, a shift in your A1C or anything, your vision can be impaired. You can have blurry vision and all those things. So you have to make sure that your eyes are being taken care of. So I do, I go every year and it just got to a point that my peripheral from the side was really not very good. Now, I at the time had an old car and uh, it didn't have all the bells and whistles that these new cars have. Like for instance, my daughter's car lets you know that somebody is close to you on the side or you know what I mean? And uh, that type of thing. So I'm sure in 2000, what year is this? 2023 today, if I went to buy a car that I could drive safely because of the things that these new cars have. But at the time, I was not seeing well. So I think you need to know when your time limit is. You need to know if it's safe, if it's not safe. If it's not safe, it's not safe. It's not safe for me to drive anymore. So that is why I don't drive. I love driving my little car. I loved going where I wanted to go, when I wanted to go, any time that I wanted to go. I didn't have to depend on anybody. I was self-sufficient. So that was very hard to give up driving. So once I knew I didn't drive, I still didn't get rid of my car. I kept it and I still paid the insurance and sat there. I never used it or anything. So I figured I'd give it to one of my children. I'd give it to obviously the baby because he he liked fast cars so he probably would have liked the Acura but the thing about it is he doesn't know how to drive a five speed so I was trying to see if uh, that could be accomplished in a timely manner but you know I just was paying for my tags paying for insurance and 
all those things and parking, paying for all those things monthly. And I'm a frugal minimalist. So I'm like, why am I spending this money when I don't even drive this car? So I sold my car. I sold my car and that's that. That's why I don't drive. But I'm not missing out on anything because they have a service here in Jacksonville called Jacksonville Transit Authority. I'm a disabled veteran. So they come and pick me up. But you have to make reservations. So if I want to go somewhere tomorrow, I have to make the reservation today. I cannot call them tomorrow to come pick me up on that same day. That's the only bad part. You'll have to use an Uber or a Lyft. And they're very expensive. So uh, I try to use JTA as much as possible. Okay, the next quint question. How many years were you in the Navy? Let's scratch that one out. I'll tell you this. Because a lot of people, uh, they try to add and subtract my money. They try to add and subtract. Well, why you ain't got this? Why you ain't got this? I served my time in the Navy, whether it was one day or 100 days. It doesn't matter. Any person that served in the military is a veteran. And I served more than a year. I'm just trying to make a point here. People always label. They find a way to label stuff. I'm a disabled veteran. Well, how disabled are you? It's... It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's also asking me about how many years. Now, I didn't retire from the military. If I would have retired from the military, my life would be totally different because retirement and getting out the military are two different things. I got an honorable discharge. God loves me. My children love me. And hopefully the country loved me too. Okay. So I served. I have nothing bad to say about the Navy. The Navy afforded me a lifestyle that I still enjoy to this day. Because if it wasn't for me serving my country, I probably wouldn't have any health insurance. I can go to the VA. I have community care. I can go to cancer specialists. I get all my treatments and all of that 100% free. I'm a United States disabled veteran and I'm proud. Thank you for the question. The next one is, why do you live in 660 square feet? Ooh. Seemed like I answered that one before, but we'll do it again. I lived in a house. I got divorced. I tried to maintain that house. Why? All I was doing was going further and further in debt, trying to live in a house that looked beautiful from the outside, but in the inside, I could barely feed my kids. It made no sense to me, so I let it go. Now, that's hard for some people to understand, but I downsized. I went to a three bedroom townhouse because it was me. It was Patrick. He was a sophomore in high school and my daughter Lyric was graduating and about to go to college. So I had to have space for all three of us. So I got a three bedroom townhouse. It was, you know, it wasn't the best neighborhood. I could afford it. And it was something that I had to do. Now I went from that to 660 square feet because it's just me. I had the three bedroom apartment, but that still was too big for me because it's just me. I have no dog or nothing. It was just me and my birds. So I moved to something smaller. Now, a lot of people like, I can't believe all you live in 660 square feet. If you look behind me, this is the pantry. Next to it is the back door. I'm looking straight ahead is the front door. That's it. That's it with my apartment. Off to the right is the bathroom and my bedroom. That's it. It ain't no other rooms, no halls to walk down or anything. 660 square feet. The only thing I got in this house is the stuff that I need. I only live with what I need. I'm a frugal minimalist. And if you don't know what that means, it's I live frugally. That's very minimal. And I do not uh, spend or acquire things that I don't need. It just takes up space. So I have a certain amount of shoes. <laughs> I have two pair of shoes. I really do. I have two pair of shoes and a pair of Crocs. I have maybe seven to ten t-shirts that I wear over and over again. And I wear stretch pants like these. I got four to six pair of these and then a couple of pair of jogging pants. That's it. That's all I need. And so a lot of people don't understand how you can live this small and still function. But it's okay for me. It's not for everybody. But I like being alone, I like living alone, and I love living in 660 square feet, okay? So that was one, two, three, okay. So uh, it's a couple of questions on here that I'm not gonna answer. 
but th this other question was just ridiculous. And then this other one is asking me, uh, what did I do as a surgical tech? Well, as a surgical tech, I did all surgeries. When you are in surgical tech school, you have to complete all the surgeries. You do uh, some things it's hard to attain like brain surgery, but if it depends on who your instructor is. Now, the thing about it is brain surgery is very tedious and you know maybe one student could get in there maybe or whatever so some surgeries you never get to witness while you're in school but the majority of the surgeries i did i was a hustler back then i was just it was and then i had a great instructor my instructor just happened to be <laughs> she was on the heart team for baptist so she was she had access to to um open heart surgeries and anything with the heart. Also, she um, she flew on the plane and would go and move, you, you know, like, uh, what was it? The don't, um, when you donate your organs, it's a name for that. But she did that for a while too. I don't know if she was doing that when she started teaching. Teaching was something she was trying to fall back on and slow her roll a little bit uh, because she was getting older. But she was a fantastic teacher. So I did all the surgeries. And then um, when I was in, still in school, I got a job offer from three different places. I got a job offer for eyes, but I knew I wasn't going to do that. It was way too stressful. It was everything is under a microscope for the doctor. And then everything was so small and my glasses was already thick. I had progressive lenses. Okay. I was already there and I could barely see. I was like, I don't know if I could do this. It's too stressful. And you got to be like this. So uh, so I got uh, a job offer at the eye clinic downtown uh, when I did, my, I did my time there. And then I got a job offer woo, in ortho. And I'm like, no, ortho is so hard for me. It's a YouTube on here that does ortho, and he is fantastic. It's called, he, his channel is called, it's a Terrence kind of thing. He is marvelous. He is wonderful. He is phenomenal. And he does, uh, he does all surgeries. But ortho is something he could do in his sleep. He like, come on, come on. Ortho was so confusing to me. Ortho is so much stuff. So I knew I didn't want to do that. They offered me a job because I was doing it efficiently because every night, I had to read up on particular surgeries. I had to do the best I could the night before. And it just was, I was like, I can't keep up. And the third job offer was for labor and delivery. So, you know, I was like, I don't know if I want to just do labor and delivery all day. But they had a job in the hospital uh, in the ER. So I worked as a surgical tech in the ER. That's the best way to learn. You do everything. You do a little bit of everything in there. And then I finished up my career doing labor and delivery, which was a blessing. 99% uh, of happiness is in delivering babies because it's very a very small percentage that doesn't turn out well. But it was a blessing all my years that I served in the United States Navy. And then it was a blessing all the years I was able to serve as a surgical tech. So that's it. Those are the five questions for Q&A. I hope you learned a little bit more about me. I hope you understand that privacy is a big thing for me. Certain things have to stay private. If you don't have um, anything that's hidden, that's saved, that's close to your heart, then you are allowing yourself to be uh, hurt and you are allowing yourself for your dreams to be stepped on. Now, I don't have any problem vlogging, telling you about my life. If I did, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel, right? But certain things that you hold dear to your heart, you have to hold close because there are people who all they do all day is kick down dreams. We don't want that to happen. So I hope you enjoyed the Q&A. I hope that you took the time to like this video, that you leave a comment for me. Tell me what you think. Also, share my video with people who you think might be encouraged, inspired by my words because I like to empower people. I like to encourage people, people with limited mobility, disabilities, whatever. Share my video. Come back tomorrow. Check out another video. And if you like it, subscribe to my channel. 
if you love it, join my channel, okay? It's less than a cup of coffee, okay? So here we go. We're going to breathe in and breathe out and get our day started. You ready? Breathe in, breathe out. We thank you, Father God, for another day. We thank you, Father. So, wherever you headed today, maybe you got to go to work, maybe you got to go to school, or maybe you got to go to the bakery, wherever you got to go, be happy, be joyful, and put a smile on your face, and treat people with respect. It's the only way to live, okay? So, have a good day, have a blessed day, and remember, God loves you, and so do I. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you guys for watching today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Take a minute to leave a comment. I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye.